Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Yusu Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So this was inspired by a top I seen in Marks and Spencers. I've posted some pics over on Instagram on my stories. So if you want to see what the original looked like, have a look over there. But if you want to see my version being sewn up, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is 100% linen shirting fabric in this gorgeous stripe. And onto the cutting out, this is my back. I have two pieces of that fabric underneath this pattern piece. And then I have notches at the top and bottom of the placket, one at the hem, and a couple just to indicate where my strap will be. So that's my back pieces cut out. And now straight on to prepping the placket. So I've cut myself a strip of super lightweight interfacing and I'm just lining it up between those notches you see me snip earlier. Pressing it into place. And then pressing in my seam allowance, again using those same notches. Folding for the last time and pressing. So that's my placket all prepped and of course you can see here I've done the same on the other side. So now my back is ready for straps but before I do that I just want to work on the front. So my fabric underneath my pattern piece here is on the fold. I have a couple of notches at the bottom of my dart legs one at my hem, one at the centre front at the neck and a notch that I didn't show here to indicate where my straps are. You'll see that later on. So on to marking the dart. So I'm just popping a pin in at the point of the dart and then where that pin pierces the fabric, marking with my fabric pen. And now drawing in my dart legs. So I'm just lining my ruler up with that dot and the little notch you see me snip earlier drawing in my lines. Of course I do the same on the other side and then pinning up those darts. So I'm just matching up the notches at the bottom of the dart legs, popping a pin through my pen mark on top making sure it comes out through the pen mark on the bottom, repeating and a pin on the horizontal to mark the point. And again I do exactly the same on the other side and ready to stitch. So starting at the bottom of the dart legs, back stitching, following those pen marks the whole way up, pulling my threads at the end. So that's how that looks. So off camera I've just tied off my threads and given both darts a nice press. So now my front is ready for straps. So I have two layers of that fabric underneath this pattern piece and I have a couple of notches at one side and one at the other. That's my straps cut out. So now I just want to finish off the edges of the straps first of all. So I'm just folding in by about half of my seam allowance, pressing folding again by the same amount and pressing. And I do that on each of the long ends. And ready to stitch. And I'm stitching just along that inner crease using a little bit of a longer stitch length. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. And I've just finished that off camera, given my straps a little bit of a press and this is how they look. So now I'm ready to add my elastic. So I've just wound some elastic around a bobbin and I'm going to run six lines of that elastic along these straps. So for the first I'm just lining up the edge of my strap with the edge of my foot. My needle is all the way over to the left 
I'm using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, no back stitching, just pulling my thread to finish. So that's my first line sewn. So for my second, I'm just lining up the edge of my foot with the first line that I've stitched. Just trying to keep that line as straight as I can get it. Putting my threads at the end. So that's how that looks. So I'll finish that off camera. And this is how it looks. So the top one here has been steamed and the bottom one has just come off the sewing machine. So I'm just going to hover my iron just above the strap and apply some steam. And you'll see here that that piece of fabric will just shrink down until it's the same size as the one on top. So that's both my straps all prepped and ready to go. So I'm firstly going to add them to the front. So I'm just lining up the notch you seen me snip earlier on my strap with the notch you didn't see me snip earlier on my bodice. Pinning, same thing on the other side and ready to stitch. And I'm stitching here within my seam allowance. I just want to tack these in place for now. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And now for this little top, I've decided to finish the neckline with a facing. So I have a front and a back facing. The front is cut on the fold and the back I have two pieces. And to give the facing just a tiny little bit more structure and make my neckline nice and crisp, I'm adding that same interfacing, so that super lightweight boil interfacing. Just pressing that in place. So that's my interfacing added. And the last thing I want to do to prep the facing is just to press up the hem. So I'm just pressing that hem in underneath just by about five millimeters or so. This will just give me a really nice clean edge. And of course I do the same on the front and the other side of my back. So now that my facing pieces are prepped, I can add them to my bodice. So starting with the front, lining up my side seams, my center front and pinning and ready to stitch. Stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, just trying to follow those nice curves of the neckline, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So now I just need to trim down that seam allowance. So using my pinking shears, I'm just taking away probably about two thirds of that seam allowance. I'll finish that off camera and now just to help me out on the next step I'm going to press that facing away from the bodice and make sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against the facing and now to understitch so my seam allowance is over to the right hand side my facing on top and I'm stitching directly through both just a couple of millimetres away from the seam you've just seen me sew, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. So that's my facing all nicely understitched. Now it just needs a good press, which I've done off camera, and this is how it looks. Super neat and tidy. Love that. So now that my neckline is finished on the front, I'm ready to add my back bodice to my straps. So just lining up those notches on the strap with those on the bodice, pinning and ready to stitch. And again, I'm just stitching here within my seam allowance, just wanting to tack these in place for now, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. And of course I've done the same on the other side. And now to add the facing. So lining up my facing with my bodice, making sure that my placket is out of the way, I don't want to stitch through that, and pinning, and ready to stitch. So stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, 
same thing as the front, just trying to follow that nice curve of the neckline and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I've just trimmed down that seam allowance and pressed it just in exactly the same way as I did the front. And here, just under stitching directly through the facing and that trim seam allowance underneath using that longer stitch length again, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And after a good press, this is how it looks. So that's my straps and facing all attached to the back. So now I can finish off my placket at the back neck. So I'm just folding my placket back on itself, just at that last crease line, opening up my facing and ready to stitch straight across the top. Back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. And of course I've done the same on the other side. And after a good press, this is how they look. So that finishes my placket at the top. So now for the side seams. So I'm just laying my back over my front right sides together and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. So I just need to tidy up this seam. So for this little top, I've decided to fell this seam. So to do that, I'm just trimming down one side of that seam allowance, and then pressing the uncut seam allowance over the top and then just tucking in that uncut seam in underneath and pressing. And I'll just show that one more time. So just tucking that seam alliance in underneath and giving myself a nice crease line along the edge. And once it's all done, ready to stitch. And stitching here right along that inner crease edge, back stitching at the start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. Nice and neat and tidy. So off camera, I've just given both side seams a good press. And while I was there, I've pressed up my hem. So I folded the edge just by about five millimeters or so, pressed and then pressed up by my hem allowance. And now that that's done, I can close up my placket at the bottom just in exactly the same way as I did the top. So just unfolding my hem, folding the placket back on itself on top of the hem and stitching straight across at that crease line. Back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. And after a good press, this is how it looks. So now I'm ready to finish the whole inside so I need to run a stitch line along the edge of the placket, right along the edge of the hem, and up the placket on the other side. Back stitching at the start, using a longer stitch length here, back stitching at the bottom of the placket. So that's one side of the placket all nicely enclosed. And now for the hem, again back stitching at the start, using that same longer stitch length just running my stitches right along that crease edge and back stitching at the end. So that's my hem all enclosed. And then the other side of my placket. Back stitching right along the crease edge and back stitching at the end. So that's my placket all closed up on both sides. My hem all nicely finished on the inside, everything neat and tidy. So I only have a couple more things I have to do. One of which is to sew my facing down. So starting at the centre of the front, using that same longer stitch length, sewing right along that crease edge and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. Nice and neat and tidy. So that's all of my edges on the inside enclosed. And now I only have two more things I need to do to finish this little top. 
One of them is to add my buttonholes and the other to add my buttons. So for my buttonholes, I'm just lining my ruler up with the edge of the placket, measuring down from the back neck about a half an inch, popping in a pin as a marker, and then from that point at two and a half inch intervals, the whole way down the centre back. So for the top buttonhole, I'm going to stitch it on the horizontal, so just placing my needle right where the pin pierced the fabric, so right where my marker was, stitching my buttonhole just in the usual way. So that's how that looks. And I'll finish the rest off camera, and this is how they look. So to open my buttonholes, I'm just popping a pin at the top of my stitches and then using my seam ripper to open up the fabric in between the thread. So the pin will stop my seam ripper going the whole way up. So that's one done. I'll finish the rest off camera. And then just to make sure I don't get too much fraying around my buttonholes, I'm popping in a little bit of fray check here. And I'll do that on all of my buttonholes. And now to mark where my buttons will be. So I've just pinned my top and bottom placket together and I'm just using my fabric pen to pop a dot right in the centre of the buttonhole. So that's my button placement marked the whole way up. And the buttons I've chosen for this top are these standard little wooden ones. So I've just stitched those on off camera and with that this little top is complete. So I have that gorgeous placket down the centre back my buttons all in place, my hem all nicely enclosed, same with the side seams, and then that lovely bit of detail around the back and front neck with that facing, and those beautiful shoulder straps, and this is how it looks on. So this is just a basic little summer top, but in this fabric and with this fit, it is super comfortable really light, really breathable. The button placket just gives it a little bit of interest at the back, I really love that. Those straps I absolutely love, I will be doing much more of that I'm sure. I think depending on the fabric for this one it could be dressed up or down. I've made another version in a cotton, I think you'll be able to see that over on Instagram. If not you will see it soon, but anyway love how this one turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks!